you've probably used an AI system in the last 24 hours. Um, if you shopped on Amazon and bought a textbook, it said, you know, people who buy this book also buy these books, right? The system is learning what people tend to buy. Uh, it's recommending things. So recommender systems is a, a, a popular um, uh, subfield in AI. Um, if you watch a Netflix movie, um, Netflix does its recommendations using a very fancy AI learning system. In fact, they had a million dollar prize out for a while for whoever, any researcher that could improve their recommendation system by 10% would get a million dollars. Like that's how much they cared about AI. Um, and the team finally won uh, that prize. It was a big team of people collaborating. Um, point of sale systems. The, the biggest user of computer technology is probably Walmart. Um, they have the world's biggest databases. Um, they track everything that everybody buys at every Walmart all over the world, and, try and they try and figure out how do we make people buy more stuff? What do people tend to buy together? If you bought this, you know, what should we put next to each other on the store shelves? So if you, if you were here buying this, what should I put next to it that you're also going to want to buy? Um, that kind of analysis of point of sale data, um, it's a, uh, a big user of AI technology, machine learning. Um, I mentioned chess as being super hard. I forgot to mention checkers. Checkers is really famous because it was solved a few years ago, just a few years ago. Someone actually figured out uh, the optimal moves in checkers. Um, so there's a system, there's a big database up in Canada <laughs> where some guy knows uh, the right thing to do. Um, and it's, it's solved in the sense that he figured out if you play optimally from the initial state of the game, can you win? Or uh, like, are, are, is, chess, is checkers inherently better for the person who goes second or the person who goes first, or does it not matter? Uh, so that's kind of cool. That uh, Checkers is a huge game tree as well, but it's actually been solved if you use some clever algorithms. Um, <sighs> jet engines. My last anecdote for this slide. Um, the Air France flight from Rio to Paris that went down in the middle of the Atlantic in a storm uh, it made the news a lot about a year ago um, it, it, because it was a, not a very old plane. It was like five years old. Um, and it left the control of South American airspace and like they never heard from it again. Uh, it's not exactly true. They heard from uh, one of the engines, called home and said, I'm not feeling well. Could you please have some parts ready at the gate when I arrive? There was a self-diagnosis system on the engine that realized it had been damaged and that things were not going well and figured out what the problem was and ordered the parts. Because air, the airlines are willing to pay for engines that are this sophisticated because any downtime for an airplane loses the airline a lot of money. Like a plane is very expensive. So if you have to buy extra planes to have around just in case one is broken, that's not good. So they pay a lot of money to have systems that when it gets to the gate, they can quick repair it even before the flight is scheduled to take off again, so they don't lose the time of the plane. So um, that, that call from the engine is the only data they had about where to look for the wreckage, um, which they did eventually recover. Um, so anyway, so AI is all around. Um, okay, one more anecdote. Um, the engines on the 777 were actually designed by a, uh, an AI system. Uh, the turbine blade, the shape of the turbine blades. Um, you know, they really care about getting efficient turbine blades. And anyway, that was designed by an AI. So AI is all around us, all kinds of different ways. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, these are some fun robots. Um, but we all, this, so this is a self, one of the self-driving cars. Um, this is a system that some folks at UNH have worked with. Um, it's an underwater robot. Um, this is a helicopter that's landing by using a camera, though it's not being flown by a... a, a person. In fact, speaking of learning and engineering, um, there's a guy at Stanford who does uh, aerobatics with helicopters and he uses AI to do it and the, the, the robot is better than any human can, can fly a helicopter, which is big news because helicopter pilots are very expensive and flying helicopters is very dangerous because like they're often used for search and rescue. So like it's a bad storm. In fact, it's so bad like the boat is not floating anymore and we're going to send a helicopter out in it. Um, so getting those helicopters to be driven by machines rather than people is a very, you know, that will save lives. Uh, first of all, it'll save more lives of people getting off the boats because the helicopter will be driven better 
And second, it'll save the pilot's life so the helicopter doesn't, when the helicopter crashes. So oh, there's a lot of cool stuff going on today uh, in AI.